This is a brief overview of the subjects I will be covering in this video. When it comes to selecting a connector, make sure that it's something that's easy for you to make and customize and something that is durable and will survive several crashes and the test of time. These are the three major connectors that I usually come across. I'm very partial to the EC3 connector because of its just easiness to make and it's rather easy to disconnect and connect. As a rule of thumb, it's a good idea to have uniform connectors across your entire platform so you won't have to make adapters and whatnot. It'll help you out in the long run. Lithium polymer or LiPo batteries are the preferred battery right now for our aircraft, so I'd highly recommend that one. Choosing a battery is very crucial, and the three top bullets are the ones I like to emphasize the most. S is the amount of cells that a battery has. Uh, for quadcopters, three and four cells seem to be the most appropriate. I myself use a three cell because of its maximum power range. The milliamp hour is the fuel tank of your battery. The more milliamps, the longer your battery can actually perform and give power to your quadcopter. The C on a battery represents the maximum output it can give. The higher the C, the more amps can be drawn at any single time. Generally about 30 C is very sufficient. One of the questions I had when I first started is how do you charge these batteries? When you plug them in, you're going to want to charge at 1 C. And that is the equivalent to what your battery actually is. If you have a 3 cell battery, you're going to charge it at 11.1 .1 volts at 2.8 amps. That is 1 C. Like I mentioned in my previous video, the ESC controls the amount of voltage going to your motor. That is done by the three wires coming out of the top of the ESC to the three wires on the motor. Just connect them in any algorithm you'd like. If the motor isn't spinning in the appropriate direction, just uh, switch to the wires. It should fix the problem. It is very important that when the bullet connectors actually connect the ESC to the motor that they are shielded with heat shrink or electrical tape because that can cause a short and can destroy your ESC or your motor and that can usually be kind of costly. This is a power distribution model showing you the flow of electrons from the battery to all the components of your quadcopter. At the bottom, one represents the battery being attached to the wiring harness and giving 11.1 .1 volts to the ESCs in the UBEC. Of course, the 11.1 .1 volts comes from the battery itself because the battery I depicted is a three cell battery. You're going to want to connect all the positive and the negative wires from your ESCs together and that's going to create your wiring harness and this is very important because this is going to be located in your aircraft and this is where your battery is actually going to enter the circuit. On the very right side I depicted a UBEC. This can either be internal to your ESC or it can be an external item. A UBEC is a battery limiting circuit. This is going to take the voltage from your battery and tune it down to 5 volts and this is what the rest of the components in the aircraft are going to run off of. Becks are not optional. Connecting your battery straight to your flight control board or other auxiliary equipment probably will overload it and destroy it. The 2 represents 5 volts from the UBEC to the flight control board. Once the 5 volts is set in the flight control board through the various other ports on it, the RX and the auxiliary equipment such as a GPS will be powered in turn. If there's anything I left out on this power distribution model, please leave a comment below or email me. I will respond in a timely manner if I can. The next item I will cover is the signal distribution model. This is a signal distribution model and this is what's going to happen when you give input from your transmitter located on the ground to the aircraft. The one of course represents the antenna and this is going to be your net for electromagnetic waves and then it's going to be funneled into your receiver. Quadcopters are four channel aircrafts. They have roll, yaw, pitch and throttle and your RX knows this so it's going to translate it through four wires to your flight control board. Three is the flight control board and once it receives the four different signals from your receiver it's going to then in turn signal the ESC on whatever motor that you wish to rev up or slow down depending on the maneuver that you commanded. Once the signal is given to the ESC the ESC is now going to regulate the voltage to the motors to help uh, maneuver the aircraft. Next I'll cover aircraft balancing and this is the actual attaching of the components to the airframe and how they're actually going to affect your center of gravity and movement ability. You're going to want to keep all the components centered on your aircraft. So on an H quad you're going to keep them on the center I-beam and that's going to be the center of that model. Now the X and the plus, the, the joint of the two booms is going to be your center of gravity. Keep everything 
balanced in the center and that will allow you to move in all directions very freely and without really too much trouble. The last thing I'm going to cover is the actual mounting of objects. Keep them toward the center and keep them really close to the airframe. Don't have any protruding sort of objects. It's going to reduce your aerodynamics and it's also going to produce drag, of course. So keep it really nice and compact. Um, if something's protruding when it gets into a wreck, it's probably going to destroy it. But of course, antennas, they can protrude uh, both vertically and horizontally. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or whatnot, please leave in the comments or email me. I'll be happy to help you out. And of course, like and subscribe so I can, uh, of course, make more videos. I appreciate it.